it just came to me that I have not tested this thing's durability. Ready? Mm, I'm gonna hold off on that test. Hello everyone and welcome to Action RPG. I'm your host Aaron and for today's video we are headed back to the world of the Arcade Motion Blaster. Part of my week-long series breaking down the ins and outs about this item. Now I've been getting lots of people reaching out to me talking about certain games, gameplay, competitiveness, what does it do as far as actually playing, and those videos are coming. They just take a little longer to edit and put them together and I want to make sure they are the best possible quality. So what are we going to be looking at today? Today we are going to be looking at fit and finish. So how does it actually feel? What are the parts, plastics, buttons, all that good stuff? And I have a couple interviews scheduled with some unbiased people that'll tell you their thoughts about the physical product itself. But first, if you're new here, welcome. Here at Action RPG, I stream, I do tech reviews, I cover major gaming news, but the big portion of this channel all things action RPG. So if you grew up loving the Diablo series, if you're a fan of top-down isometric hack and slash style games, you are in the right place. So please consider subscribing and supporting smaller channels. All right, let's break down this blaster. As always, I will share my thoughts. Please feel free to share yours in the comment section below. Here we go. Okay, so let's get right into this. If you go to Arcade's Indiegogo page, which I have linked in the description below, this item retails for $150. Now, if you pre-order it in one of its three available skins, you can get it for $99. So it is not an ultra cheap product. So what does the build quality actually look like? Now, obviously, if you play PS PS4 or Xbox, even the best pro controllers range at about 70 bucks. And if you're on PC, over here, a very nice keyboard and mouse can range about $150, but everyone knows in PC the sky's the limit. But a really, really high quality setup can range $100 to $150, and of course you can get something on sale. You know, so how really does this stack up? And believe it or not, there is a whole heck of a lot to talk about, about quality and all the different button options and things on this blaster. And what we are going to start with is this clamp, okay? Now, first off, the clamp that actually holds the mobile device is on a rail. So you can put your phone there. You can put it there. You can put it wherever you want. For me, I want it as close to me as possible, so I bring it all the way to the back. It's also got this little, little screw right here. You unscrew it, now it's all floppy. You can set it to wherever you want based upon your favorite viewing angle. And that's obviously all you know, on the user. Now, once you've got the rail and you've got it to the right angle, the phone, this is something that I realized after owning this for a few days. Okay, so you got your phone, right? Once you put it in there, I probably should have turned my phone off, okay? When you're playing your game and you're going back and forth, this little clamp is strong, but your phone will rotate, right? So, I mean, it's not great. The clamp's strong. I don't feel like the phone's gonna fall out, but it is going to move, which is gonna be ultra annoying. So this is the trick, which most people probably wouldn't have a problem with, is when you are using your arcade motion blaster and have your phone docked in it, keep your phone in a case, because then you don't have as much wiggle room because the phone is larger and this clip can handle the largest Samsung Galaxy S10 Plus with a pretty large case on it in the blaster. And now you get no wiggle. Kind of nothing really around fit and finish or quality, but it is a good tip if you plan on picking one of these up. So the rail system works nice. Like I don't feel like this thing is gonna be like falling out. I like that you can angle it, but it does feel secure. Like. I don't have to worry about my phone falling out, and I don't have to worry about the phone wiggling when I have it in there. So that is the first part of this. Number two, 
the buttons, okay? The actual configuration. Now, the last video I put out with the trailer actually goes over in detail what everything is on the blaster, but it is very different when you get it in hand, of course, right? Kind of just like everything in the world. Now, on here, when you're actually holding the blaster, how you move is with your fingers right here. Up, let me see if I can get a better shot of this. So right here, that is how you run forward, and the bottom is how you run backwards. And believe it or not, like you actually get used to that fairly easy. What takes a really hard time to uh, get used to are these buttons. And this is basically your strafing. So you're trying to run side to side while going backwards and forward. That left and left and right is these buttons right here. Okay, and I'm going to come back to these buttons because there's something that I realized that drove me crazy while I was playing this. Okay, so those are the buttons as far as on the back side of the blaster. Now, you come to the front here, you've got this little joystick. Now, I had a friend actually trying out this blaster today, and he was playing in lazy mode. That's what I call it, because he was sitting down and not physically moving the blaster. He was just using this. Now, the idea, if you actually want to be good at using this, is you want to be able to move it while simultaneously playing using this. I kind of give the idea of like, you know, Playing like old school GoldenEye where you only have like one joystick compared to like playing Halo where you have two. You kind of need both the movement and this in order to be ultra competitive to make sure that you're precise. Now buttons that are actually on this unit, I mean there's so many of them I don't know when you would ever need them all. I'm sure there's somebody out there that probably does. So on here, under this, you've got your X, Y, and Z buttons. And these are basically your normal main configuration. So you could set it to like reload, throw grenade, crouch, or sprint, or however you want to do it. Now when you flip it over, you've got all these buttons, okay? Now you've got, what is it? A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and H. All of these programmable buttons. Now the way that I describe this to people when they ask me what do you use all these for, Think about when you used to play like a Guitar Hero or Garage Band, like those types of games where you're like kind of going back and forth. These are all programmable for whatever you want to do. And that's what you're going to be able to do through the application that is going to be tied to this device, which is not out yet. But I think I'm going to be doing a video on the app as well, breaking down what you can do because I have access to the version. Just waiting on an OK on that. Now, there is a secret button on this device. Okay, so take a look. See it? You've got the trigger. You've got these ones right here. I've showed you those. Like, where are, where is the secret button? Oh, by the way, you can push this in too. It's also a button. And no, that is not the secret button. The secret button is the logo. Now the logo, it looks like, oh, that's cool. They, you know, they have the logo on it. Of course, why wouldn't they? This is actually a button like they needed anymore. This is your stream on and stream off button for the Arcade Motion Blaster. Yes, that's right. If you have this connected Bluetooth to your mobile game streaming to your PC, you can push this button to go live on your stream and then immediately to take it off. That is a super cool function and it's probably the reason why they got PewDiePie to back this sucker because he's such a large streamer. It's a really really cool option and I am excited to try that. Imagine me picking up the blaster, throwing on my favorite you know mobile game, whatever I'm gonna be playing, and I can immediately push one button and it starts my stream. That is cool. But yes, of course, I will have to test it. Now, back to these buttons right here. I'm lefty. So when I had a friend playing earlier, I literally didn't even realize this, which seems so silly. When he's playing the blaster, i turn it this way. When he's playing the blaster, he uses his thumb, right? Simple, to click these buttons. I cannot do that. When I play with this blaster, my thumb doesn't have anything to click on this side. 
and I'm terrible with my right hand. I have to use my left. So that means when I am playing with this blaster, and I'm going to keep switching sides, I actually use the palm of my hand, which I'm actually getting good with, believe it or not. So I'll be running backwards and forward, okay, shooting, and then when I want to strafe, I use my palm to push down left and right. And it works, but obviously it's not going to be as good as using a thumb, okay? That is my first complaint. This thing is for sure built for righties. I mean, there's just no question about that, okay? Number two thing, and it's the only thing that I've really seen from a quality standpoint that I think could be um, improved. These three buttons right here, okay? Every other button feels like a good joystick, power button feels solid, left or up and down or forward and backwards, strafing, hook, even these buttons, all of them feel solid, but these three buttons, okay? You see this? Look, look at this. You see them? How they wiggle? It's because it's all one button. You can for sure tell. And then listen to this. You hear that? That sound is these three buttons because they wiggle. They wiggle. Now, I'm not going to be a stickler. The buttons function perfectly fine. It's just, you know, I, I've got to be honest and call it out when I see it. Now, again, this is a pre-production model. So again, I have been told that fit and finish will be better on the end product. I am not sure what the actual ones that go out that come off the production line are going to look like, but at least on this model, everything feels great. It feels sturdy. I joke around and my kids always want to drop it. That's why I kind of made that as my hook, but the blaster itself feels really, really good. I like the weight of it. It's about a pound. And then when you add your phone on it, it about doubles the weight, but it doesn't feel like something that's like cheap. Um, it doesn't feel like something that's gonna break very easily. It does feel durable. Just that little shaky button. And then obviously lefty, I have a hard time. I can't really strafe, so. Um, but other than that, the blaster feels good. Now, one little thing I'm gonna show as well. Let me grab my phone. You see how it's green, right? Green means nothing's connected to it and it's like in charge mode. Green, charge, battery, right? And if you push it, it makes a sound. I don't know if you can hear that. Okay. Now, when I connect it to the Bluetooth, let's see if I can make this work. Mm -mm -mm. Turn it off, turn it on. Connecting, connected. Green, blue. So when it's actually connected to the Bluetooth, it goes from green to blue. And then you push the trigger. It's kind of a neat little function. I really like stuff like that because it shows that they really did their homework in manufacturing the item. Color changes based upon it being connected to Bluetooth. Very neat. Okay. Time for some unbiased interviews about the Arcade Motion Blaster. Okay, so we are here with my first interviewee. Okay, I'm gonna hand this to you. Yay. Okay, be careful. And I have some questions for you, okay? Question number one, did you know you were doing an interview today? No, I did not. Okay. Did I tell you what you have to say on this interview? No, because there was no time. <laughs> yes. There was, that's true. It's true. There wasn't enough time to set her up for this. Okay. Question number three. Have you played with lots of toys in your lifetime? Yes. How many toys? Like 1,000. 1,000 toys she's played with in her lifetime. Okay. Have you played with lots of electronics in your lifetime? Um, yes. How many electronics? Like 20, I guess. Or 20. 20. Okay. 1,000 toys and 20 electronics. Okay. First question about what's in your hand right now. Okay, the new Arcade Motion Blaster. Okay, does this feel like it has high, it's high quality? Okay, now when I say high quality, does this look like something that grandma got you at the Dollar Tree? Like a dollar toy? Or does it feel like something nice you got for your birthday? Tell the, tell the camera. Something nice that you got for your birthday. Okay, why? Because like, it's kind of a toy. 
because like you get to play games on it, but it's also kind of like serious because there's so many buttons that you like have to learn how to do it. Okay. Does it feel like something if you dropped it, it would just break into a million pieces, or does it feel like something that's durable? Well, I feel like if you dropped it, it could like it could break a tiny bit, but you could okay. still be able to use it probably. Okay, so it would be only a little bit damaged, but still functional. Yeah. Okay. Is there anything else you would want to tell us about the Arcade Motion Blaster? Yes, I'd like to tell you that it's fun to use because you just get to move it around and then the thing goes. And that it's also fun to, it's also fun to shoot it. Okay. First, unbiased, unscripted interview. Thank you, honey. Say bye to the camera. Pew pew. Bye. Hello, everybody. We are here with interview number two. I just grabbed this young lady who is covered in chalk from outside, and I'm going to ask her the same series of questions. Sweetie Pie, did Daddy tell you you're doing an interview today? No. Okay, no. Did Daddy tell you what you have to say? Um, no. Okay, good, good, good. Have you played with lots of toys in your lifetime? Yes, Sienna hasn't. Okay. Have you played with lots of electronics in your lifetime? No. You haven't? Uh-uh. Have you played with phones and tablets before? I wanted to, but Sienna won't share her phone. Oh, she won't share her electronics. Has Have you played with the computer before? Yes. Okay. All right. Now, Daddy's going to ask you a question, okay? Does this look like an electronic to you, or do you think this looks like a toy? Electronics, because, look, you get a pew it or it's a toy. I think it's a toy because, look, it's fun to play with it. So it feels like a toy and an electronic? Yeah. Okay. If you dropped it, do you think it would break into a thousand pieces? Or do you yeah. think it feels strong? I feel, I feel strong. Here, let me drop it. No, don't drop it, baby. Okay. You th you, so you said you think it feels strong? Yeah. Okay. Do you like playing with it? Yes, because look, you're going to move it around and you get it like, and then you get a pew, 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 pew. You get to do lots of that. That's right. Okay, baby. Last question. Do you like the arcade motion blaster? Yes, thumbs up or thumbs down? What do you think? Thumbs up. Okay. Say bye. Bye. I like two thumbs up. Two thumbs up. A thousand thumbs up. A thousand thumbs up. I need 1,000 thumbs up. That's a lot of thumbs up. Now say bye with a wave. Bye. I hope you all enjoyed those experts that I brought on to give you their opinion of the Arcade Motion Blaster. It's always good to get some non-biased feedback. All right, so I took you through the item. I showed you all of its bells and whistles. I told you what I think, and I told you what I thought that they could improve on. But overall, if I had to score the Arcade Motion Blaster out of 100 for their pre-production model, I am gonna give it an eight out of 10, which is a fine, good score. It's not a 10 out of 10, but it's also not an F, right? Now, I have been doing some thinking about it too, is that, you know, why didn't they throw any chrome? Why didn't they throw anything shiny on this item? And then it dawned on me. I wouldn't want that on that either because it would make the item more heavy. It does feel sturdy. I don't feel like I'm gonna break it. I feel like I could, like for the most part, it's a really sturdy product. But if they threw all those other bells and whistles on it to make it more visually appealing, which again, I don't think it's not appealing, it would be too heavy. Then when you're going around blasting, your arms are gonna get tired. When you get tired, you get less accurate. Right now, it's a good weight. I'm gonna leave you with that. If you have any questions about the Arcade Motion Blaster, please continue to leave it in the comment section below because I'm using those comments to make future videos. And I've got a couple ideas about some other things I'm gonna be doing, of course, with gameplay on the way. So that's all I've got. Stay home, stay safe. Aaron.